Now, I will admit there were quite a number of highlights in Obi-Wan Kenobi Episode 3. I know that Episode 3 has been getting a lot of criticism by the Star Wars fans, but really the top threes for me were the moment where, of course, Darth Vader is literally burning Obi-Wan Kenobi in the fire. And the second, of course, is where we actually get to see Obi-Wan Kenobi visualizing, or at least sensing, what's going on with Darth Vader being put together by the machines. And then finally, my favorite part of the episode had a lot to do with the fact of how it sets everything up with the Jedi Sanctuary. This is Mike Zero. Make sure to subscribe if you're new to the channel for future Star Wars updates. Also, by the way, guys, make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel. I thank you all so very much for the kind support. It is greatly appreciated. Now, one thing about Disney Star Wars is that we already know that they are moving forward with a Obi-Wan Kenobi Season 2 to really propel Obi-Wan Kenobi into the future of the franchise. Now, it does make a lot of sense because we already talked about how Ewan McGregor signed a multi-show contract, so keep that in mind here. He's not just assigned to the Obi-Wan Kenobi series, but he will be appearing as Obi-Wan in other Star Wars TV shows that take place within this era of the Star Wars universe, essentially in this Kenobi-verse, as I like to call it. It's all the shows that are going to take place in between the events of Revenge of the Sith and Star Wars A New Hope. Now, with that being said, however, what's even all the more exciting about Season 2 is that they will be using a lot of the older concepts from the original scripts of the Obi-Wan Kenobi movie before Kathleen Kennedy had any kind of input in all of that. Now, when you look at it in that sense, that does give fans a lot of hope because we do know that Kathleen Kennedy had a little bit of a hand in the first season of the Kenobi series, indirectly of course, because a lot of the original scripts from the first draft of the film took place and actually transferred over to the Kenobi series. So that's why you have a little bit of a Kathleen Kennedy theme here and there in every single episode. So with that being said, however, given that the Kenobi series is already, or is already halfway over with the fourth episode, about to air in a couple of days now, Creators John Favreau and Dave Filoni are beginning to work, of course, on The Mandalorian Season 4. However, it's described that recently the director of the Kenobi TV series is currently working on the second season of the Kenobi show that has now been greenlit and approved by Disney CEO Bob Chapek that is moving ahead. Now, many of the storyboards from the original story of the Kenobi series is set to be used for the second season of the show that is currently being reworked immediately ahead of time. One of the big scenes that are set to be used in the next season of Kenobi is set to feature a big moment with Obi-Wan Kenobi using the Force to communicate with both Qui-Gon Jinn and Master Yoda from afar. Further, it's noted that this was a scene that was meant to appear in the original Obi-Wan Kenobi movie, as well as the first season that is now going to be used in the second one of the show, and that this will be teased in the first season as well. Now, Kenobi is said to meet with the Force Ghost of Qui-Gon Jinn for the first time in two years since the events of the first season. This is described to now take place within Obi-Wan Kenobi's own hut on Tatooine during the nighttime where Qui-Gon Jinn reaches out to Kenobi by speaking his name. Now, Kenobi comes outside of his, fame at hut, of his fame at, famous hut, as seen in Star Wars A New Hope, where he begins to talk more about his confrontation with Darth Vader. Now, let me just stop right here for a second. Now, that is a very interesting development, is that you guys may recall that so far in this season of the show, we do not see Obi-Wan Kenobi's hut. He is currently living in a cave. And given that the next season is planned to take place roughly two years after the events of this one, he's now going to have his very own hut on Tatooine. That is a very interesting development, and it even ties directly more into Star Wars A New Hope. As you guys may recall, when Luke goes to Kenobi's hut, that's where he actually learns more about his father, Anakin, and gets the actual lightsaber. So moving forward from all of that, one of the storyboards actually goes over a sequence in detail in which Qui-Gon Jinn begins to go over a valuable lesson with Obi-Wan to try and let go of his fears and to diminish the nightmares that he is having and reminds him that this is not a healthy thing for a Jedi. This is where Yoda appears also on Tatooine next to Qui-Gon Jinn, however, not as a Force ghost, since at this point in time Yoda is still alive, but as a Force projection. 
Now, just as Luke used in The Last Jedi, this is described to be a scene in which Yoda offers to teach Obi-Wan this type of power, and Kenobi even accepts his teachings on this new Force ability. So keep in mind that a lot of these new Star Wars shows, when it features many of the main characters that are going to be Force-sensitive, basically Lucasfilm wants to explore new Force abilities to be used in a lot of these projects, such as the shows, the animated shows, books, novels, and comics, etc., to really expand all of this from point A to point B, right? And I think that's one of the most important things that you can really like look at here is that they are really trying to connect the dots between this and the sequels overall. You know, that might be one big criticism of how they're connecting things to The Last Jedi a little bit here and there. So it's going to be a very tricky thing for Deborah Chow to handle that. Moving on. Now, this signals that Kenobi will eventually use the Force Projection Technique, also known as Force Doppelganger. Now, Liam Neeson as Qui-Gon Jinn here is described to appear older than he did in Episode 1 and holds a different type of Force ghost design, of course. He is not the traditional blue color, but with more a white glow with orbs surrounding and floating around his body. Now, this was an original concept by Lucasfilm that is now being used for Season 2, since it is a go and will hold a stronger budget and will have no creative input by Kathleen Kennedy at all. The scene then begins to progress to a point where both Qui-Gon and Yoda also reveal to Obi-Wan a piece of Skywalker's future that is going to be crucial to the end of the Sith, where they both inform Kenobi that Luke holds a future where he will be responsible to bring balance to the Force and the end of the Age of the Empire for good. Now, Luke is described to have many more scenes in the second season in comparison to the first one. So, I know that's one big complaint right now about the Kenobi series, is that it's really all focused on Leia. We're not really seeing a whole lot of 10-year-old Luke in the show. You know, that's one thing that a lot of fans are kind of a little up in arms over. I wouldn't say that it's a big deal, but it is something that a lot of fans are critiquing right now. They are actually offering a lot of criticism about that, you know, because Luke is such a big key to everything and being hidden on Tatooine and how he's so very important and all this time when Kenobi is away, we're not really learning exactly, you know, what Luke is up to or, you know, how Owen Lars is taking care of Luke. I feel like they that they should really cut back to that back and forth but they will be doing that a lot more in season two, thankfully, that's gonna serve Luke justice more. So with that being said, all right, with the second season of Kenobi now greenlit by Bob Chapek, you can see that they really wanna make sure that they take advantage of the shows that have the highest ratings. I don't know if you guys looked at the stats, but the Kenobi series is the highest rated Star Wars TV show as far as ratings go. All right, I'm not quite sure about how feedback goes, but so far the Kenobi series has mixed reactions. Let's be real, okay? I think that The Mandalorian Season 2, the feedback of that is superior than Kenobi at this point in time when you look at what fans are saying and reacting to certain plot elements. That's just how it, things are at this point. So with that being said, you know, on top of all of this, Everything really is moving in motion. They are trying to build this universe between episodes three and four. So let me know what you guys have to say about all this below in the comments. And if you guys did enjoy the content for today, make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel. I thank you all so very much for the kind support and I'll catch you guys next time. <laughs>